G'day everyone, Tim from vMix here, and today in this video, we're going to be taking a look at how you can get live content from your phone or your tablet screen directly into your video production with vMix. Capturing screen content is something that we get asked about quite a bit here in our support emails, so we thought we'd go over a general overview of some of your different options. Now, it's going to be best to try these out, see how you go, and see what works best for your production. Now, I'll include all of the links to the apps and software in the description. Now, if you wanna jump ahead to a particular section, feel free to use the chapters in this video. Now, there are a few ways to access a screen in a live video production, some good, some okay, and some a little ridiculous. Don't worry, we will include the ridiculous ones at the end. Now, maybe uh, you've discovered an even better way to capture your screen, or you have an awesome app that you always use. If so, leave us a comment so we can check it out and maybe pin it so that other people can find out about it. Now, the most two common ways of capturing a phone or tablet screen are to use hardware capture to capture the screen directly or to use an app to mirror the screen. So with most content in live video production, using hardware for capturing is going to give you the best option. So it's going to give you the highest quality and the best results. And that is exactly the same for screen capturing. Now you can take an adapter or a converter that will grab the output of your screen and make it a HDMI source for your capture device. So for Android devices, there are plenty of USB-C or micro USB to HDMI cables that you can use for this purpose. You can also use adapters as well. Now, one very important thing that you will also need to check is to make sure that your Android device supports USB-C to HDMI output using one of these cables or converters. For example, Samsung, only certain models work with USB-C to HDMI. For example, this is a lower end tablet. It's an A8 tablet. This doesn't support USB-C to HDMI output. Whereas my phone, which is an S22 Galaxy, this does support it. So you will need to make sure that you check with your manufacturer to make sure that you're going to be able to get the signal out of the phone. Okay, so I've now gone and grabbed one of our USB-C to HDMI cables from our cable emporium. And what I'll do now is just show you what you would need to do. This is the cable here. You have USB-C on one end, you have HDMI on the other end. Same with this iOS one here that I'll show you how to use as well. So you basically, you just grab your device that works and you plug in your USB-C on one end and then you go ahead and plug your HDMI cable into your capture device on the other end. So for our iOS devices, you will need to check to see what your device supports. So in 2022, the new iPads support USB-C, but iPhones still support Lightning and so do older things like this iPad that I have here. So what you'll need to do is make sure that you have the right cable and then get the right converter for the device. So I have this one here, which is Lightning to HDMI. So that's what I'm going to use for my iPhone right here. So once you have the device, what you can do is go ahead and plug it in. So I'm just going to plug this in here like so. And then I'm gonna connect up a HDMI cable to this end. So now I have my HDMI cable. So I'm gonna plug this into the end here like so. And now I've got a HDMI cable plugged in via lightning into this iPhone. So once you've got either your iPhone or your Android tablet connected up via HDMI, just plug it into your capture device and you should be good to go and ready to add it in vMix. So you just need to go to add input, then go to camera, then select the port that it's on like so. Now you will notice this says SDI. I am converting my HDMI feed into SDI for my capture card in here. So I'm gonna click OK down the bottom. As you can see here, I now have my iPhone in the production. So let's go ahead and move this over. And as you can see here, it's super responsive. Uh, you get a good quality of that into the production. So let's just say I wanted to utilize it a little bit more. What I'll do is I'll go into the position settings here and I can just crop this over and then I can easily use it as an overlay crop this over here like so, and then maybe even just move it across to the corner. And so now I could potentially use it as an overlay in vMix. So let me switch to this main camera, and then I can just use this as an overlay here and go, hey, now I'm using my phone, and then just scroll across it uh, and use it in the production. Now the process for Android devices will be the same. You plug in your converter to your phone or tablet, and then plug the HDMI into your capture device. Now. I have a Samsung device here. So the one thing with this is that it will try and load up an app called Dex. Uh, so that will basically try and use your phone on a different screen and not actually mirror the screen. So if you wanna mirror the screen, you will need to turn Dex off. Now with any of this hardware stuff with different Android, different converters, 
make sure that you test it out. Make sure that you fully try it out. Do as much research as possible to make sure that your device and converter will allow you to get a HDMI feed out of it. So that's how you can hardwire your phone or tablet into your production by using one of these converters and then going straight into your capture card. It's going to give you the best performance and results. All right, so now let's talk about apps. Apps are another option for capturing your phone or tablet screen. However, these are going to be less reliable than a hardwired connection. There are two options here. Apps that will cast your screen onto the local network using HTTP, RTSP, TCP, or SRT, or perhaps apps that will mirror your screen to your computer, and then you can desktop capture that screen and put it into vMix. So we have had a look through a lot of the screen casting or mirroring apps on the Play Store and the App Store, and it is pretty bleak. Most of the apps have sort of less than desirable review scores, and they're not really updated very often, so that's gonna be fun. Now, maybe you have a good app that you like. Again, feel free to post it in the comment and we can pin it and we can check it out. Now for iOS devices, there is an official NDI screen capturing app called NDI HX Capture from NewTek. Now that will allow you to bring your iOS devices screen via NDI into vMix. So it appears on the same network and you can add it directly into vMix. Now this is going to be 10 bucks US and it has a three star rating, which is surprisingly good compared to a lot of the other ones. So here is how you use it. Let's go ahead and grab our iPhone here and let's find the NDI HX Capture. So this is what it looks like, NDI HX Capture. Let's click to begin broadcast and let's start the broadcast. And we are three, two, one-ing. All right, so now that should be available on our local network. So let's go ahead and go to add input. Go to NDI, let's go to the bottom here. That's my iPhone. Click OK. And let's see, yep, there we go. It is now in the production. Let's take a look at this, let's move it around. As you can tell, I don't have an iPhone. So yeah, it's fairly responsive as well and uh, fairly good quality. So if you do have a half decent local network and you wanna try it out, then this uh, NDI HX Capture app might be a good option. So while I'm here, you can also see that we have this screen link. So I'm gonna click on this now and use screen link. Now this is an Elgato app. It's also $9.99 on the App Store and you can use this in order to connect up to your production. Now there is a free option for this, so you can use it for 15 minutes without having to pay for it, which might be a great way to try it out. You also will need to download the 4K Capture app from Elgato, which basically installs a driver so that your computer can see it like a webcam. This one does have 1.9 stars on the App Store, so it'd be best to probably try it out to see if it's going to work best for you. All right, now let's try and add this one. So I've got my Screen Link app here. So basically you just need to go down to this Command Center again and go to the Screen Recording Options here. And I need to select Screen Link and then Start Broadcast. Three, two, one, again. All right, so this should now be available for me to select as a camera in my production. So go to Add Input camera and then it should appear in the drop down link here Elgato screen link okay and let's see how we go yep so here it is and let's take a look at the responsiveness if I can actually I do not use iPhone so please forgive me if I can't do this very well there we go uh, so here we go this is our um, thing as you can see it's a much laggier compared to the NDI HX capture and obviously hardware as well. So I'm scrolling and then it's like, yep, now I'm gonna move. So it's, uh, yeah, something that you probably be best to try out for yourself to see how it goes. For Android devices, there aren't any native NDI screen sharing apps from Newtek. There are some apps that do allow you to mirror your screen using different streaming protocols or HTTP. I have an app here called Screen Stream Mirroring that's hard to say, that allows you to connect to your local network and then you can make your screen a source via HTTP, TCP, or RTSP. So this one does have loads of uh, ads and stuff as well. So there is a paid option and a free option as well. So they do have different ways of doing it. So you can maybe select a browser and add it as a browser source. So I'll do that one now. So I'm gonna click on web browser up the top here. And as you can see here, there is an address, a local IP address that you can use and then you plug that into vMix and away you go. So I'm just gonna add it now as a browser source in vMix. So I go into add input, click on web browser. I've already got it entered here. So it's just the local address that they provide you. Click okay and let's take a look. 
Let's move this over and let's uh, hit play on this one. And as you can see, I now have it in my production. So I can go back, oh no, I don't wanna do that. Let's go here and let's just move it across. Now this one is fairly delayed as well. Um, you know, it's fairly slow when it comes to actually bring the content in, but it will do the trick. It's probably not the best resolution either, but it will do the trick if you are looking for an option. So it does offer different options as well. So you can go up to the menu here and you can see different options like media player or VLC media player. So those will be an RTSP stream or perhaps a TCP stream. So if you wanted to add those into vMix, let's select media player. Now, as you can see, it's killed the web browser. So we now need to grab this media player address, which is down here, which is an RTSP address. Go to add input and then we can go to stream and then select the VLC option and then add that URL in here. So once that's added, I just click OK and it will appear, hopefully, in my production. All right, it took a little while, but here we are. So it's now in my production and I can go ahead and start using it. Um, I keep pressing that button, but yeah. So there it is as uh, part of the production. So there are three different options there, TCP, HTTP, and RTSP that you can use in vMix. Now, if you're a fan of SRT, then you can take a look at the Laric Screencaster as well. Now, if you're brand new to, to using vMix and using SRT, it's probably not as straightforward as using the other options. So you will need to have a bit of an understanding of SRT as well. So you can check out the, uh, the guide from Larix, or you can check out our SRT guide to give you a better idea about SRT, but that might be a good option to try out. Now, another option for capturing screens is to have an app that can communicate with software on your computer, and then you can use vMix to capture that window or display into the production. Now, this is a bit of a roundabout way to get the screen into the production, so I would be reluctant to kind of use this. Uh, you also need to have additional software running on your vMix computer just to bring in a screen that you can possibly capture. Now, there are a bunch of software out there that does this, and they have their own settings and quirks and prices, and there's plenty of YouTube videos about people talking about them, but the other options, I think, are probably the best way to go. Now, there is also some inbuilt Windows software called PhoneLink. Now, that allows you to connect up certain Android phones with an app called Link to Windows. Now, I've tested this out, and it does work pretty well, uh, although you still need to be running that software on your computer and then bringing it into vMix, so it's kind of... It's a long way of doing things, but it might be the best way for you. Now with all of these options, it's gonna be up to you to try them out, see what works best for you in your production environment and your situation. Now, if all of that seems like a bit of a pain, then here are two ridiculous ways of grabbing the screen. Now, first of all, it's not that ridiculous. Basically, you could just point a webcam at your tablet. So for example, I've got a camera up here. You can point this at your tablet like so, and then go through things and talk about stuff. So it's not gonna give you necessarily the best experience, but you can capture it. You could zoom right in and then you can capture the screen. So that's one way of doing it. Just grab a webcam and you're good to go. Now secondly, if you don't have an extra webcam available, but you do have access to a local security cam, either locally in your premises or perhaps outside somehow, then you could always send the person out onto the street with the tablet and then zoom right into the tablet and just get them to stand there during your presentation. That's free, easy and effective. So that's it. Those are some of the ways that you can bring screen content from your phone or tablet into a live production situation. Like everything, I'd recommend trying these different methods and apps to see what works best for you. And if you're new to vMix, head to our website at vmix.com to grab a free 60-day trial while you're at it. Now you can also check out our help documentation, recommended hardware, and also send us support inquiries from our website as well, vmix.com. So thanks for watching and we'll stream you later.